impact analysis, we'll have two talks. The first one is improved linear, no, improved differential linear cryptanalysis of seven round Chasky with parti partitioning. And the paper is given is uh, by Gaetan Laurent, and obviously is giving the talk. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about uh, cryptanalysis of Chasky. So first of all, uh, what is Chasky? So Chasky is a MAC algorithm that was designed by Moua et al. and presented at SAC uh, 2014. So uh, what, what this means, well, a MAC algorithm is something you use uh, to provide authenticity of messages. So it's used when you don't want to encrypt your message, but you want to make sure they're authentic. Uh, it can also be combined with encryption, of course, to build authenticated encryption, and then you get all uh, security features. So uh, uh, when, when, uh, one typical use case would be if you have something like a sen uh, network of sensors, say you're measuring the temperature somewhere, and you want to collect all the data, and you want to make sure all the data is authentic, that someone is not sending you false data. So you use this MAC algorithm to authenticate the data. And you don't actually need encryption because uh, a temperature reading is something public. Anybody can do their own measures. So there's no need to encrypt the message, but you want to make sure they're authentic. So that's when uh, a MAC algorithm will be used. So the way a MAC algorithm works, you have some function that takes uh, a key and a message and gives you uh, a short tag as output. And then you send the tag together with the message. And then the recipient of the message can recompute the tag with his own copy of the key and then verify that the tag is correct. So in the case of Chesky, it's a MAC algorithm that's optimized for microcontrollers. So it's a lightweight uh, design. And actually, one of the uh, main design goals was to, be, was to be 10 times faster than AES on the microcontrollers. So that's a very aggressive design. And it's also interesting to look at Chesky because Chesky is currently under consideration uh, for standardization by ISO. So it makes sense as a community to look at this design and see uh, how secure it is. So in terms of design, uh, well, Chesky looks like, uh, like this picture here. So you can see it's a permutation-based design. So you have this big public permutation pi, and you iterate it, uh, and you XOR messages inside the state at every round. And actually, the way it's constructed, you can see it as CVC Mac on top of an even monster cipher. But, but in terms of uh, design, it's really just this permutation-based thing. Uh, the size of the state is 128 bits. That's also the size of the key. And in terms of security, you accept to have uh, birthday security, which means that any attack should have a time data product at least 2 to the 128. And more concretely, the designers of Chesky limit the amount of data you should, use, you should uh, authenticate with a single key to 2 to the 48 which means that uh, any attack should require at least 2 to the 80 times. So um, more precisely, if you want to understand the design, you have to look inside the pi permutation. And what you find inside is uh, this thing here. So as I said, the state is 128 bits. Uh, you consider it as four words of 32 bits. And then you do a series of operations on those words. And you only do very simple operations. You do additions modulo 2 to the 32. You do rotations, bitwise rotations. And you do XORs. And those three operations uh, are very simple in software. They're very fast. And uh, when you combine those, you get something we call ARX uh, designs. And you expect that the mixing of those different operations gives you some, uh, some security. So more precisely, uh, this is uh, exactly the set of operations that you do. And you can see it's the same structure as SIP hash. And in the case of Chesky, you do uh, eight of those rounds. So that's uh, Chesky. Now, in terms of cryptanalysis, if, you, if we want to study the design, uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to look at security properties of the pi permutation. And the simple way to do this, uh, in terms of the MAC algorithm, we're going to use uh, single block messages. And when you have a single block messages, the, the authentication is just this very simple thing here. So you take the message, you XOR a key, you permute, and you XOR another key. And you can see it also as an even monster cipher, actually. It's just the encryption of an even monster cipher. Uh, but there's a, uh, uh, something interesting that you cannot do decryption. I mean, if you have a real even monster cipher, you expect you can do encryption and decryption. Here, because it's a Mac, you can only uh, take a message and get the tag. You cannot do the inverse. And if you look at uh, previous work on the security of this permutation, uh, the designers show um, some bias if you only reduce to four rounds instead of eight. And this can probably be extended to an attack on five rounds if you do some extra work. So um, <coughs> now let's see uh, what we do in this work. So uh, 
if you try to do crypt analysis in symmetric key cryptography, there are two uh, very important techniques, of course, differential crypt analysis and linear crypt analysis. I'm not going to go through the details, but the basic idea is that in differential crypt analysis, you look at uh, differences. So you start with some differences in your plain text, and you try to predict the difference in the ciphertext. And if you have a good input difference and output difference, so that there's, this happens with a good probability, that gives you uh, a distribution. On the other hand, uh, linear cryptanalysis, what you do is you look at linear approximations. So you're going to select a subset of the input bits and a subset of the output bits, and we call it uh, a mask. And what you want is that uh, when you take this, uh, the XOR of those input bits and the XOR of those output bits, they are correlated. And if the correlation is strong enough, uh, this gives you a distinguisher. So in the case of ARX schemes, uh, when you try to apply linear or differential cryptanalysis, uh, when you look at, those, or at your differential trail or linear trail, it will often look like this. So you're going to start somewhere in the middle with a single active bit, and then you propagate uh, upwards and uh, downwards. And so if you start from a single active bit, maybe after one round you will have five active bits, after another round you'll have uh, 20 or 30 active bits, and the next round you get maybe 100, and then you cannot do anything anymore because basically everything is active. So you, you, you have a few rounds where you can control what happens, and then uh, everything explodes. And Basically, you, you, you just uh, lose everything. So uh, because of this property, um, it's, it's interesting to look at techniques where you can combine two independent trails. Because if you have uh, one trail, so if you have one trail up to uh, somewhere like this, you cannot really extend it. But if you can combine with another independent trail, then you will be able to, to target more rounds. So in particular, one technique that does this is the boomerang attack. So that's a very nice uh, cryptanalysis technique where you combine two differential trails. But unfortunately, we cannot use it uh, here on Chesky because we have no decryption oracle, like I explained earlier. So boomerang attack uh, will not be applicable. However, however, there's another technique that does something similar. It's differential linear cryptanalysis. So that's what uh, we're going to use here. So differential linear cryptanalysis uh, was introduced by uh, Longfrot and Hellman in 1994, and then extended by B.M. Dunkelman and Keller in uh, 2002. And the main idea is, uh, so you're going to divide your cipher in two parts, a top part and a bottom part, and you want to do something independent on each part, of course. That, that's the main point. On the top part, what you do is uh, you try to find a differential trail. So starting from some input difference delta, you, uh, you try to have an output difference uh, gamma with uh, a good enough probability. So that's what you do in the top part. And then in the bottom part, you try to build a linear trail. So starting from mask alpha, you want to go to mask beta with a good enough uh, correlation. So that's how you define your uh, differential linear distinguisher. Now, the way you use it, you're going to start with a pair of inputs with, of course, a uh, difference delta, because that's the interesting difference. And then uh, you know that with probability p, you're going to reach difference gamma in the middle. OK. Now, if you take mask alpha out of those uh, y and right prime values, you know that with probability p, you actually have this difference gamma. So then you, you know exactly uh, what you get here. And if you don't follow this differential trail, well, you can expect that you get something more or less random. So you can have probability 1 half times uh, 1 minus p. And so this means you actually have a bias of, uh, of uh, p over 2, basically, when you do this uh, linear masking here in the middle. And next, you're going to look at the bottom part. And we know that there's a correlation between uh, y alpha and z beta. And we know there's a correlation between y prime alpha and z prime beta. And when you combine those three uh, equations, what you get is that there will be a correlation between z beta and z prime uh, beta. And so you start with a pair of input with a fixed difference. And then you can say something about uh, uh, this mask taken in the output. So that's how you use uh, the distinguisher. And if you look at uh, how, how much it costs to use this distinguisher, the cost is uh, basically uh, 1 over p square epsilon 4. So that's basically you pay the differential price twice, and you pay the linear price twice. So it's, uh, it's somewhat expensive. But when you cannot extend your trades anymore, it's still a good technique because you can combine two of them. So you, you still get uh, good results, even though it's, it's, uh, it seems uh, very expensive. It's actually nice because you can add rounds uh, more efficiently. So now, uh, what, what we do in this paper, we're going to do it a, a little bit differently, because when you do this, uh, this analysis, it's actually quite complex to see what happens uh, in the middle. 
because you can have lots of different trails. Starting from delta, you can have many different values gamma here that are uh, good enough and that can interact. And same thing, starting from beta at the output, you can have many alpha that are uh, somewhat good. So it's very complex to really uh, understand what happens here. So instead, what we do is we're going to divide this cipher in three parts. So that's only for uh, evaluating the complexity. The attack is still the same, but we use a slightly different way to uh, evaluate the complexity and to, to actually build the trails. So what we do, we divide in three parts, and we select the position here where there is a single active bit, because we know that most of the time, good differential trails and good linear trails will start with w uh, a single active bit somewhere in the middle. And you'll have this kind of uh, shape with one bit in the middle, and then it gets complex, and then it gets complex in the other direction. So if we start from this position, we can divide in uh, three parts. And, and now the middle part is uh, we, can, we will consider it as a, differential, a small differential linear uh, distinguisher. So at the top, we have something purely differential. At the bottom, purely linear. And in the middle, it's already something differential linear. But the good thing is, uh, since it's small enough, you don't have too many rounds, you can do it experimentally. And you can evaluate the bias of this small differential linear distinguisher. And when you do it this way, you actually capture all the different ways the, the, the trail can interact. So you get a much better uh, estimation of the complexity. And uh, in order to build this distinguisher, what we do is we just try all possible positions for this single active bit. Uh, here in the differential part, here in the linear part, then we evaluate the bias of the differential linear uh, thing in the middle, and then we build a differential trail and a linear trail. And we just keep the one that's the best, of course. So try all possibilities. So uh, if you apply this to six round chess key, it actually works quite well. So the best position we, s we found was uh, to, to have four rounds in the middle, then one round at the top, one round at the bottom. And we used those bits uh, as the, the position with a single active bit. And then we have this input difference and this output mask. And if you look at this, uh, if you try to evaluate the complexity of this uh, differential linear distinguisher, you find that it's something around 2 to the 34. And we actually implemented this. And uh, the, the experimentation uh, really matched this prediction. So it means this analysis is, uh, is uh, relatively good. So uh, this is already a six-round uh, distinguisher, so that's, uh, that's already nice. But of course, we want to try to uh, attack more rounds. So how can we extend this to more rounds? Well, what we do usually, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, SPN ciphers, if you have, say, a differential distinguisher on five rounds of AES, and you want to break six rounds of AES, what you do is you're going to guess some bits of the last round key. You're going to do partial decryption, and then you're going to test your distinguisher. That's a very, very common uh, way to do it. In the case of ARX ciphers, it's a bit more complex because you, you tend to have differences more or less everywhere. And when you guess key bits, you don't know exactly which key bits are going to affect your addition because you have carries that can go all the way around. So it's, uh, it's not so easy. It's a bit more tricky. So uh, in, in this paper, we try to, 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 to give techniques uh, that, that can be used to do something similar to this partial key guess and partial decryption. And the way this is going to work, uh, so we're going to guess some key bits. So uh, that's, that's the, the main idea. And then what we do when we guess some key bits, so if you guess, say, bits of the, the first round key, then from the plain text, you can compute a few bits of the state after the key addition, of course. And then what we do is we partition the data according to the value of those state bits. So we have several subsets of the data. And what happens is uh, we're going to look at the, the bias of the distinguisher in each of the subsets. And what will happen is if we select properly the, 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 the bits of the key that we guess, then some subsets will have a stronger bias, and some subsets will have a, a, a weaker bias. And then this will help us uh, get a, a better advantage. So those techniques uh, have already been used in, uh, in some ways, so in particular by Biam and Carmeli at SAC 2014. And also the attacks on uh, Salsa 20 are also very similar to in, in uh, the main idea is, uh, is quite similar. So um, more concretely, in the case of uh, linear crypt analysis, I try to explain a little bit how this works. So if you do linear crypt analysis of an addition, uh, so uh, first of all, an addition, you can write it as uh, this set of equations. So if you do uh, x is uh, y plus b, actually each bit of the output can be written as the xor of the two input bits and some carry bits. And the carry bits as computed as the majority of the previous uh, three bits, so three input bits and one carry bit. And so if you, uh, if you try to predict, say, a bit xi of the output here, 
So it's going to be AI plus BI plus CI. And what you can do is say, well, the carry is correlated to any of the input bits because it's a majority including this bit. So there is some correlation between CI and AI minus one. So you get this uh, linear approximation that XI is correlated to AI plus BI plus AI minus one, and you have a bias of one half if you use this linear approximation. So now when we use partitioning, uh, the idea is we're going to look at the actual values of those bits uh, at the I minus one position. And uh, so in, in the actual use case, what we do is we guess the corresponding key bits and then we can get this bit from the plain text bit and the key bit. And when we know those bits, if we know that both of them are equal to zero, then we know for sure that there is no carry. So there's no longer any probability involved. We know definitely there is no carry, and so we definitely have xi is uh, AI plus BI. And uh, similarly, if we know that both bits are equal to one, then we know there is definitely a carry, and then we have uh, this equation. So already by, by guessing uh, two, two corresponding bits in the key, we have those two subsets where we have uh, an increased bias, and what we do is we just throw away the rest of the data, because uh, if those two bits are different, then we don't know whether there is a carry or not, and we just ignore this, uh, this amount of data. So what, what happens is you throw out one half of the data, but your distinguisher, you actually gain a factor of four. So in the end, you gain a factor of two in the total things. So that's what Viam and Carmeli did. And in this work, we try to improve this a little bit. And what we do is we look at more bits of the input. And, and this allows us to analyze the case where those two bits are different. If we have zero and one here, if we also look at the previous bits, if we have zero and zero, then we know there is no carry coming to step i minus one, and therefore there is no carry coming to step i. So we can uh, we have to throw out less data, so we can use more of the data, and then we get uh, a, a better, uh, better complexity. So if, if you really want to do this in a more complex case, well, you have to look at different uh, bit positions because you have different active bits. You want to guess several bits ne next to each other, and you can also try to predict what happens at the second uh, nonlinear operations. But everything gets uh, really complicated and messy, and it's hard to do a really uh, correct theoretical analysis. So what we do instead is use a more uh, experimental approach. So we just look at all the bits that are potentially interesting. So that means all the bits that are next to uh, a bit that we are interesting, interested in. And then we just uh, collect a lot of data by guessing those bits and dividing uh, the data into subsets according to those bits. And we just measure experimentally what bias we have in each subset. And then uh, this allows us also to detect which bits are actually interesting. And, uh, and then to just evaluate the complexity of the attack using those bits. So that's what we do for linear cryptanalysis. On the differential side, we also do something uh, similar. So it turns out it's a bit more complex to apply this technique to differential cryptanalysis, but, but it still works. But you have to use uh, structures and multiple differentials. So it's a bit more complex, and you get a smaller gain than in the case of linear cryptanalysis. But when you combine uh, all this on both sides, uh, if you look at the six-round attack I described earlier, we, we get a significant improvement because we actually reduce the complexity to only two to the 24 pairs rather than something like two to the 34. So we have really a, a nice gain by using this uh, partitioning technique. <coughs> and you can see that the gain is better on the linear side than the differential side. Now in terms of time complexity, uh, the way you do the attack, basically what you do, you're going to uh, do some guess for the subkey and then you compute some distance uh, between your uh, measured bias and your theoretical bias for each key guess. And what happens is you have to compute uh, so a whole lot of values uh, L of K. I'm not going to go through the details, but the important thing is when you compute all those distances simultaneously, you can actually do it with a fast Fourier transform. And then it doesn't cost uh, uh, very much. And basically the time complexity will be very close to the data complexity thanks to this uh, FFT trick. And in the end, what we get is this six-round attack. Uh, the time complexity is about two to the 29, so it's not, not much more than the data complexity. And it's uh, really much better than the basic uh, differential linear distinguisher. So that's for six rounds. Now, uh, can we go further? Well, luckily, yes, we can. So if we want to use the same techniques on seven rounds, so the first step, again, is to look at uh, good differential trace, linear trace, and uh, differential linear distinguisher in the middle. So again, we tried a uh, different way to, to do the division and to select where you, f you, you put this uh, single active bit. And it turns out one that works good is to have four rounds in the middle, one and a half round at the top, one and a half at the bottom. And then you use uh, those two positions for the single active bits, and you get this input differential, that uh, output linear mask, 
and then uh, the, the, the bias of this differential linear distinguisher will be around 2 to the minus 40, so you have an attack with complexity something like 2 to the uh, 78. So, uh, of course, this is too high. You're not going to break the security claim with this uh, simple technique, but when we use the, uh, the improvements using partitioning, then you get something that, that's actually better than the claim, and the data complexity will be uh, 2 to the 47 pairs, so 2 to the 48 uh, plain text, and the time complexity is around 2 to the 67. And again, you can see that the, the gain is mostly on the, the linear side. It's, uh, this technique is really uh, more efficient on the linear side. So finally, um, here are uh, the results. So we have uh, a nice attack on seven rounds. Um, so uh, as I uh, yeah, forgot to mention, the six-round attack have been implemented uh, completely with all the, uh, all the tricks. So this gives us uh, good confidence that uh, everything is valid and that the seven-round attack will, will really work. So this means that the, the security margin in Chesky is uh, relatively slim because the full version has eight rounds and we have an attack on uh, seven rounds. And actually, the, distinguish the, the designers of uh, Chesky have decided to increase the number of rounds, and they have now proposed a version with uh, 12 rounds. So to conclude on a more uh, general note, uh, I think this work, well, the, the, the main message, I think, is that differential linear attacks are uh, really quite efficient for ARX design, so that's, uh, that's an interesting result. And uh, when you combine a, a number of tricks to improve it, you can actually gain something uh, significant. And basically, we get one more round using all those tricks. And so we have three main tricks. The first one is to divide in three sections and do something more experimental in the middle. Uh, then we use this partitioning technique to improve uh, the data complexity. And finally, this uh, FFT trick to reduce uh, the time complexity. So uh, thanks for your attention. And I'd uh, be happy to take questions. <laughs> So we are slightly over time. If there's one quick question. Thanks, very nice talk. Um, you said this is all implemented. Uh, did yeah. you put up the code somewhere online so that it can be uh, uh, good question. I didn't or? yet, but okay. yeah, I should put it online. That's okay. right. Okay. Uh, if, if you're interested right now, just send me an email. I will send it okay. to you. But yeah, it would be good to, to be online. That's All right. right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again. Thanks. So we can move to the second talk of the session, which is about reverse engineering of the S-Box of Stribok Kuznijic and Stribok BR1. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce the ciphers. The paper is by Alex Viryukov, Leo Perrin, and Alexei Udvenko.